Hello everybody, this is Toys R Us and for this special figure showcase and review we're going to be looking at the Transformers United Rumble and Frenzy Twin Pack. So what we're going to do in this video, we're going to unbox them live in a second, have a look at the entire contents of the packaging. We're then going to have a detailed look at them in both of their modes to help you decide how you want to display them. Because obviously they're Rumble and Frenzy, they've had an abundance of releases down the generation's toy line. So we will, of course, be doing some comparisons with them, their original generation one cells. Some of the more obscure versions of them, shall we say. Um, and indeed, some of the better versions. Uh, this is pretty much giving away who I think is who with regards to the colours. And indeed, right up to some of the newest versions of these as well. And funnily enough, interestingly enough, you can see here on the side, I'm pretty sure that this is the first time, I mean, up until now, the Studio Series 86 version, obviously, that Takara called the blue one rumble because there it is on the side rumble and frenzy so these as a great set to be honest um they're basically two molds they're exactly the same of course and this is a set that obviously was released in japan the us and the uk so the hasbro version of this particular figure was going to be released um in the reveal the shield toy line but it never made its way into product it never made its way out so they had the molds obviously and we have these figures so um i just want to show you because i think they're really really good now i've took these out before but because i still have the box at hand what i wanted to do is without knocking everything over is just show you them now they've got two modes they've got they don't have a tape mode obviously um but they do have of course a robot mode and a tank mode and they've got a brilliant little gimmick with regards to the pile driver. So what I'm gonna do now, I've got everything out, you can see it all here. I'm gonna stand these up properly and we can have a look at them in more detail. Okay, so here they are out of the packaging and I think it's a bit easier if we look at them individually. But what I've done is I've got the one posed so you can see you can have the guns at the top or indeed on their hands as a perfect homage to generation one. I'm just gonna move, in fact, now I'm gonna start with who I'm gonna call Frenzy. Uh, I know there's gonna be loads of comments about this, but let's have a look at him now. The detail on these little guys is brilliant. Look at the head sculpt, it's fantastic. There's articulation on the head. It'll even go all the way around. It's on like a little mushroom, so it'll go all the way around. It'll look up and down, and it's really, really detailed. The chest piece as well, love the homage there to generation one. The, there isn't any wrist articulation. You can see the hands are fused. There isn't any waist swivel, but you can move the waist up and down. So he's got a bit of an ab crunch. The legs, the hips are on a ball and socket. The knees are on ball and socket. The ankles haven't got a swivel, but they have got a tilt um, and a rock. We've got a lovely Decepticon symbol there. Um, and yeah, I mean, overall, as I say, he just, I think he looks really good. I think they've done a really good job with this. And what I've done is I've attached the guns on the top there so if i just move him to the side for a second and if we have a look at rumble what i've done is i've just put the guns on the bottom so you can see what we've got here is they're on a ball and socket joint themselves with a c-clip and where frenzies are they're just hooked inside there on that little tab or indeed if you wanted to you, you could just hook one on and you could turn it around like so so there's there's a lot of play with this guys there's lots of you know fun um ideas different ways you can set them up etc uh, they are of course the exactly the same mold um i'm going to take these off just for now what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you the pile driver uh, gimmick whilst he's in this particular mode the shoulder keeps popping down unfortunately um because i've had these on display for ages but there we go what we're going to do if we fold this part of the arm all the way up and then spin it all the way around like so then you've got this is the power driver here so you can push this in it'll be locked in there with the silver and granted it doesn't move too much i mean if you wanted to as well just to tidy it up you can turn that around um, and indeed turn the top as well just to make it look a little bit more like a pile driver rather than it all being separated so what i did was i folded the arm up like so that'll click over rotated it ooh, all the way around clipped it back in and then i turned this bit at the back around just to tidy it up a little bit more but these are the pile drivers here um i suppose if they just had that teeny bit more range of motion it would really work it'd be a really good gimmick um as you can see you can still angle them at a right angle and push them down or you can have them just nice and straight and down 
like so and again just press the silver buttons or the silver tabs on the side the only time i'll say this is a nuisance is when you're doing the transformation process which i've uploaded separately by the way if you want to see the transformation process you can see that um purely because every time you're trying to alter and twist these around you will catch them what i'm going to do though is i'm going to do a few comparisons right now whilst we've got these here um, and I suppose we might as well start with the original Generation 1 one. So as I say, that you can tell where my allegiance has gone straight away. Um, and funnily enough, I put the guns obviously there. Um, but obviously, as I had him at the beginning, you can, of course, take the guns off his hands. And you can, again, just completely copy Generation 1 and have the guns in his hands or the guns on the back exactly like I've done with Frenzy right there. Right, so I'm just going to keep him there for a few seconds for you to have a look and see um, the comparisons between the first one. That's obviously what I was on about with the chest there. Let's just move him out of the way. Um, I've got one of the more obscure ones here. So this is the Fall of Cybertron. So this is a different, I suppose, generation sort of toy line. So quite different, to be fair. Um, this one, these are way better than them. Way better, even though these came round out, out around about the same sort of time. Um, and then before we have a look at the masterpiece, this is the most up to date version of him. Um, and again, I think they've gone not backwards, but they've gone super duper basic with these. I haven't got the Studio Series 86 version yet. Um, that is obviously on pre-order for me. But I think the one, of course, that you can really compare it to would be the masterpiece. Now, obviously, these guys are super detailed, but these are four five six times probably more expensive than these so um for what you're paying they are really really good i'm just going to quickly now move him out of the way and then just do a couple with frenzy as well especially as i've got frenzy's guns at the top Ooh, nearly knocked it all over but this is again they've got both got the same gimmick you can see and it does pretty much hold um and even though there's loads of kibble on the back you can see they balance and they stand freely really really well so this is there you go there's your homage to G1 with the weapons at the top. Excuse the glare. The problem with the old figures is they did have bits of chrome on, which isn't a problem. It's actually really, really good. Um, one quick thing to do before we have a look at the alternate mode is that they did use the mould. I nearly knocked it over again for um, a Collector's Club Timesline figure. And again, exactly the same. It's really weird though that they kept the pile driver gimmick because obviously all of Blaster's cassettes didn't have the pile drivers at all. So they did the redeco here, um, but they kept, they changed the head, which you can see, which is brilliant. They kept pretty much everything else the same, changed all the paint scheme, changed the chest, uh, but they kept the pile drivers as well, interestingly enough, even though, as I say, none of Blaster's cassettes ever had this particular gimmick or indeed in the cartoons or in the magazines they never had this function what we need to do now then very quickly is have a quick look at them in a tank mode and see what they look like there right then so here he is in his alternate mode quick apology no transformation process on this video as i've mentioned it has been separately uploaded a couple of reasons one to keep the main length of the video down because it is quite tricky and two is not to spoil it for people who don't want to see it you know they might want to buy this figure and they want to experience it themselves for the first time now already what i've said is the main problem has just happened this you can see what i mean these are so temperamental you can probably pretty much make out the transformation anyway um if I, as soon as i fold him up you can see the legs are fine folded back and the arms are folded the other way now what is really cool about this tank though is that it's got a full rotating turret you can of course move these up down out to the side you can turn them around you can attach them to the back bit which you saw uh, the only negative really as i say it's these whenever you touch them if you knock that then it's knocking the feet out and it just really knocks it all out of sync and knocks everything out to be honest um apart from that that i as i already said i do oh, i do really like these guys um with regards to i suppose to some size comparisons haven't really got many tanks especially on alternate modes that's bludgeon's tank next to him you can see there um this is trax's action master tank or cannon so it's a bit bigger than that um, with regards, though, I suppose, to actually size to, to some of today's figures, let's bring them both in. So, in fact, let's go. That's Core Class Shockwave. And if I put Rumble back there as well, you can see just, I suppose, these would be probably classed as what's known as Legend, not Legends. Yeah, what were they called? Yeah, they were called Legends before, weren't they? 
um, the more cool legends. Now, that's it. Yeah, legends class and legends size rather than the core. Um, they are quite a good size. They are quite fiddly um, and they are quite detailed. So this is a newer version of Bumblebee. See what I mean? I've just done it again. So a very sort of small deluxe size. But with regards to a normal size deluxe figure, nowhere near. Right, I'm just going to set the turntable on a couple of turns in both modes, just in case people want to see and have a good appreciation of them from both sides. And then all we're going to do is we're going to round up in a minute and finish the video off. So you can make out at the back, there's all the tire, the tracks and the tire tread, etc. And that's because I've got him in the, I suppose, pile driver mode. Whereas with the tank, I've just got to quickly correct all this again because it's popped all out all over the place um, and as it's coming around now I'm just going to put the tank on uh, to show you that as well as I say so the good thing about these is they've both got good modes and I actually really like this mode because obviously they're struggling nowadays with these guys because cassettes they're not even relevant um, and they don't even really train change into cassettes they just can just transform into rectangular blocks uh, that just about fit in either sound wave or blasters um chest but uh again it's going to be interesting to see how they manage to i suppose take frenzy and rumble forward the studio series 86 is brilliant because they can just literally copy uh the um cartoon which is great but with regards to the generations toy line i'm not sure how they're going to take it but in the meantime i hope you enjoyed looking at these guys they are a bit of fun um they're getting quite sought after now i think because again people like to try and collect all of the same character etc um they're a little temperamental but they are a lot of fun let me know what you think of them in the comments thanks guys take care